On a Windows Domain Controller in Server Manager, there's lots of different tools that we can use to manage Active Directory. And one of those tools is Active Directory Sites and Services. And there's a lot of different things that we can do inside Sites and Services. First off, we can see that there are two servers that are domain controllers in our domain. We also see subnets as well and intersite transports, and they all have a different function. What I'd like to do is I'd like to rename this first site to be something more geographical. So I'll change that to Portland. Now let's create a second site by right clicking on sites and choosing new site and we'll call it Seattle. And I'll choose the default site link. And now our Seattle site has been created. And we can see there's no servers in the Seattle site, but we still have our two servers in Portland. Let's say that DCO1 now exists in the Seattle site. Now all I have to do is right click and choose move and I can choose Seattle, click OK. And now we have a new server there. Now, what's the significance of this? What we have to be concerned about is when we have more than one server in more than one location that we set up replication. Replication makes a copy of Active Directory back and forth between the two. And it also allows us to have the users log into the server that's closest to them. So if we left both of the servers in Portland, the problem would be that when the users in Seattle go to log in, they would sometimes get the server that was not closest to them in Seattle. So that's why we need to create a separate site, one for each location where those servers are located. Now we also need to set up subnets as well, because we need to say that there's a subnet in each location. So we'll choose new subnet and we'll say 192.168.21.0 slash 24 is going to be Portland. And now we're going to say another subnet is going to be Seattle, which is going to be 192.168.22.0 slash 24. And we'll assign that one to Seattle. The significance of that is if any of the domain controllers don't have the subnet that's assigned to them in their location, then there won't be any replication between them. Now let's take a look at the intersite transports. We have two different types, IP and SMTP. Microsoft came up with the SMTP option at a time when a lot of the connections between locations were really slow. When I say slow, I mean dial-up slow. And so Microsoft said IP is just not going to be fast enough to work for replication. So they gave the option for using SMTP instead. And SMTP can be assigned to a location for replication. Nowadays, this is outdated and very few locations anywhere in the world are gonna be running at dial-up speed. So it's perfectly fine to leave them all at IP. Another feature would be the global catalog feature. So if I go to the first server, DCO2, right click on NTDS settings and go to properties, then I can see that this server is a global catalog. Each Active Directory domain in Forest needs to have at least one global catalog because it keeps a copy of all the objects in Active Directory. So if there's no server with a global catalog checkbox, then that means that Active Directory no longer exists. Now you don't have to have more than one, but it's a really good idea for redundancy to have it on every single server. And again, this goes back to the early days of Active Directory when things like global catalogs would take up a lot of server space. But now we're using servers that have terabytes of information and these global catalogs only take up megabytes of space. Another interesting thing we see here is replication. And here we see replication is automatically created. Now, if you want, you can create additional replication with other servers if they exist as well, just by right clicking and choosing to create a new connection. And you can select that server from the list and then it will replicate between those two. 
Microsoft makes it so you have the minimum amount of servers that replicate with each other to keep replication traffic down. And that's a good idea. It will speed things up. But if you do decide you need to have an additional connection, then you can do that. Now, we should see replication in both of these locations. But DC01 was just recently added into Active Directory, so it might take a few more minutes. However, DC02 has gone ahead and updated and added DC01 into its replication list. Active Directory Sites and Services is a very good utility for setting up sites and replication between domain controllers.